You're listening to Gearing Up, an everyday carry podcast. This is a show that's dedicated to highlighting members and makers of the everyday carry community that are doing really awesome things. If you're into knives, gear, and talking about what's going on in the hobby, this is the show for you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Gearing Up. This is the Everyday Carry Podcast, where we talk about everyday carry stuff. Today, of course, is no exception. Um, this one's going to be a little short, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to cram in a second one. Uh, so bear with me. I, but I wanted to talk about this. So a couple things. First, quick update. What happened to last week? Your goal was to upload every week. Yeah, um, about that. So I... Work has been a little busy. Life has been a little busy. And uh, I actually sat down and recorded an episode in its entirety. 25 minutes or 30 minutes maybe? I don't know. And when I went back to edit it, it was just not what I wanted. So I wasn't happy with it. Uh, I did take the time to record. I did, you know, I, I had every intention and... I wasn't happy with it. So I, I scrapped it and I, I did want to get back to it sooner. Uh, the weekend was, was busy with the family and so hadn't had a chance to sit down. So anyways, that's what happened. Basically just, I did it, but I didn't like it. So I scrapped it and I think we're going to be better because of it. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, with this new ish setup, I can focus more on the camera and I don't know, just make a better video. So a couple of things I'm not, I don't have headphones, so I'm not monitoring myself. So I hope that I sound okay. And uh, hopefully if not, I can fix it in post. But uh, I also eliminated an app that I was using to monitor myself like the video. And I figured out that the Apple watch can remote view my camera. So I'm making sure I'm in frame, but it's also not super distracting. So yeah, small, small win. Um, we're going to try it. We're going to see how it works. Hopefully there's no like crazy limit on time and, and all of that stuff. But let's jump into the meat of today's episode. I want to talk about two things, two items that I have really grown to appreciate uh, recently. I've, I've always liked them. Um, but these are two items that don't get a ton of airtime uh, on my Instagram feed on here. I don't talk about them a ton. And recently I had an instance where I needed both of them and they came in super clutch. And so I wanted to talk about them. Uh, these are two accessories, knife maintenance items that I think Everybody should own. You should own some version of both of these. Um, I have several versions of both of them. These are just the two that live here in my office at my desk. And they've come in handy a lot. So let me set the stage. So recently I uh, received this Marion uh, fixed blade from OEG EDC. And I've been carrying it a lot, like a lot, a lot. Um, basically every day this year I've carried a fixed blade of some sort. Mostly it's been the Marion. So, uh, I was using it the other day. Long story short, I chipped the edge, rolled the edge, whatever. I don't, I don't know if it was a chip or a roll, probably more of a roll, but, uh, I, I nicked the edge just a little bit, uh, when I was doing some cutting and it was hundred percent my fault. And not only was it kind of ugly, but it was just like functionally, I could tell, you know, I'd go back to cut some paper and it was getting caught up. And so for those that don't know, I have a day job and I sit at this desk a lot. And so I, I have one tray in my little cubby of like office stuff and one in, sorry, I'm double checking the camera. <laughs> We're still good. Uh, and then I have another over here uh, that you guys can't see. Uh, basically, office stuff, pens, pencils, post-its. And then over here, this cubby is all EDC stuff. I've got my NAFS tool burrito. Absolute must-have for maintenance. 
and which is super nice at the desk because I can unroll it. I've got a nice surface. But the two things, the first one is this guy. This is a really popular model from my friends over at WorkSharp. This is the WorkSharp, WorkSharp guided field sharpener. And for the longest time, this lived in my bag. And then I replaced it with their smaller version. I forget the name of uh, sort of little keychain version. Um, and then I ended up, I took that out of my bag completely. I don't have something like this in my bag at the moment, but, um, this lives at my desk. And the idea was I could do just some quick touch-ups if I need to, if I'm doing some maintenance or whatever. And so it just lives in this little cubby. And the other day when I nicked the edge on my fixed blade, I was like, well, I don't want to bust out the big guided, you know, so I have a KME, great sharpener. Um, I use it for uh, big reprofiles and, and, and completely resetting the edges. Um, but I also have the WorkSharp Precision Adjust, which is probably my most used sharpener because it's super easy and it's super quick and it's convenient. It's all one thing, right? The KME is big case and it's, you know, the base and all that stuff. And I didn't want to break all that out. So I was like, well, I wonder, just let me just, you know, I, I have conference calls to sit in on and sometimes I have to listen and participate. Sometimes I just absorb. And so while I'm listening, I want something to do with my hands. And um, this worked out perfectly. I sat here uh, through a couple of conference calls and, you know, just basically fix the edge. Uh, I, I don't know that I even used the coarser. I think it's 330 grit and I'm pretty sure this is 600. Uh, I'm pretty sure the fine grit is all I used, but because of the angle and everything being set, like it was super easy to do. I did a few passes and noticed I was making some progress. So I continued and eventually cleared out the, the little nick in the edge. So you know, no, this is not to say like, oh, all of a sudden I think the work sharp work. No, like this has been great. It's been used uh, a ton of times, but the convenience of having it at my desk and especially for fixed blades, being able to just hit that edge really quickly and get it fixed. This was super handy and I, I don't give it enough love. So I wanted to, um, and obviously you've got the ceramic ed, uh, the ceramic edge here for sort of honing and then the strop and the strop is probably my least favorite part. I probably need to put some more compound on it. Um, but as it is, it's, it's not a super effective strop for me. Um, again, I, I also probably haven't used the strop part of it enough, but, um, uh, overall, I mean, this thing was great. And at the end of the day, I was able to just put it back in the cubby and go about my business. So it wasn't anything super bulky. It was super convenient to sit here and be able to fix the edge. No mess, no cleanup, nothing crazy. Um, so all this to say, huge shout out to WorkSharp and the guided field sharpener for just being a really great tool. If you don't already have one there, I think they're around 35 bucks. I'll try to find a link and drop it uh, in the show notes, but, uh, hands down easily, uh, one of my most underappreciated items. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of you have them and you, you love them and you swear by them. Uh, I've always liked them. It, it used to be in my bag because when I commuted to an office, I was the knife guy at work. And anytime somebody rolled an edge or chipped it or what, you know, whatever I would use it. And it worked great. I just, because I don't go to an office and I'm not around a bunch of people using knives all day, I haven't had as much need for it. And so I haven't had to really sharpen a whole lot lately. And so when this, this fixed blade, uh, needed some, some love, it was really nice to be able to bust out, uh, an easy, simple sharpener with no attachments or gadgets or tools. Like it was just simple. And, uh, that's, uh, I'm a fan of. So that was item number one. Now, item number two, I'm going to give full credit to friend of the show, Tom, Notorious EDC. He's the one that turned me on to this. This is the Knives Plus Strop Block. This thing 
is the best strop I've ever used. I swear by it. I've had it for a few years now, and it is just as great as the day I got it, and I swear by it. So huge shout out to Tom for, for bringing it to my attention. But this thing is amazing. If you don't have a good strop in your uh, maintenance kit, this is the route to go. These guys are about 25 bucks. And again, I bought it a couple of years ago and it's been a champ. Um, so absolutely love it. This is from Knives Plus. If you guys want to look at the logo there. Anyways, um, they're based out of Texas, which is really great. And they make these in-house and they go into, if you go to their website, uh, they go into the process, how everything's put together and all of that stuff. And it's, it's brilliant. And this was really nice. Once the edge was cleaned up, I was able to strop it back to sort of hair popping, uh, sharpness. And, and it also leaves a, a pretty nice shiny edge. Uh, so we gotta love that. But this thing is deceptively simple. When I first started getting into knives, uh, EDC in general and, and knife maintenance, I, I think we all go through a phase where we like mirror polished edges. And now I, I like I could take them or leave them. They're fine. But what a strop can do was lost on me for the longest time. And then when I got this and I really started using number one, a nicer sharpener, like the KME or like the precision adjust, um, they all have various attachments for replicating a strop and, and they're all, some of them are great. Some of them are meh, but I just don't think there's any getting better than this simple block. It works really well. It's, it's hefty enough that it can sit uh, flat and you can, you can strop on a tabletop or a desktop, or you can just hold it, which is, I think what I do most of the time. Um, but the size is great. I've done really large knives. Obviously I've done like the McB really small knives and it just never disappoints. So that's it. That I don't know what else I can say about it, but these two things, if you don't have the guided field sharpener from WorkSharp, uh, definitely check them out. This thing's really cool. It's got a couple of different grits. You've obviously got the ceramic rod. You can do, uh, you can twist it around to do like serrated blades and things like that. Uh, they've even, I think this is for fish hooks. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but then the, the plates are removable and replaceable. And, uh, you've also got a nice little storage area. I've, I've heard some folks will store, little bits of compound for the strop or an eraser like regular old pink eraser apparently those are good for cleaning off your stone um, uh, uh, stones I guess so hands down big fan of this thing and and really just happy with the job that it did and the strop block from knives plus was a, a great companion so these two live in my cubby, in my desk, where all my EDC and knife maintenance stuff is, along with, you know, knife lube and, and, and uh, Smith's leather balm and like all the, you know, all the little uh, maintenance items uh, exist. So, so I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you have uh, the guided field sharpener? Have you used it? What's your experience with it? Um, is there another version from WorkSharp I should check out or, or, is there a, a different, uh, you know, sort of pocket sharpener that you swear by? Um, let me know. I'm, I'm interested what you guys use and what you've had success with. And, uh, the straw block, I, I don't even want to know if you've found any others. Cause I don't think there's a way to convince me that anything is better than the straw block. So, uh, I will make sure to grab some links and drop them for you in the show notes. So you can go check them out yourselves. This is not sponsored in any way. I paid for the strop block, uh, with my own money. Like I said, years ago, it was about 25 bucks. WorkSharp did send me the guided field sharpener ages ago. I mean, it's been two or three years, maybe longer. Um, they did send it to me to check out. So full disclosure there, but overall I'd buy it again. And again, if, if I lost that one or, you know, 
ended up giving it to a friend as a gift, I would uh, absolutely replace it uh, with my own money. So huge fan of both of those items. If you don't have them in your maintenance repertoire, fix that. Go get them and uh, let me know what you think. So yeah, that's all I've got. Nice, quick, short episode-ish. And uh, we'll talk to you guys again in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to subscribe so you get new episodes every time they're released. And make sure you follow Gearing Up Podcast on Instagram so that we can stay in touch. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you next time.